Jack Benny program presented by Lucky Strike. Quality of product is essential to continuing success. An outstanding example, Lucky Strike. In a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. And first, last, always. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. American. Lucky Strike presents the man who knows. The tobacco auctioneer, Mr. William Whitley of Henderson, North Carolina, has sold over 500 million pounds of tobacco leaf, basket by basket. Recently, he said, Season after season, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy fine rat tobacco, fragrant tobacco that makes a fine smoke. I've smoked Lucky's myself for 13 years. At auction after auction, independent tobacco experts like Mr. Whitley can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Remember, L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And fine tobacco means real, deep-down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. Yes, next time you buy cigarettes, ask for Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. <laughs> Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's go back about an hour to Jack Benny's home in Beverly Hills, where Jack has just finished having his lunch. Ah, it was a very good lunch, Rochester. The best hash that I, I've ever tasted. I made it from last night's leftovers. Now, what did we have last night? Hash. <laughs> oh. Well, I got to rush over for my broadcast, so let's get these dishes washed. I'll do them. No, no, Rochester, I'll do them. I want to try out that new electric dishwasher I got for Christmas. But, boss, there's something wrong with it. Oh, nonsense. You probably don't know how to operate it. I'll show you how. Now, you put the dirty dishes in like this. And close the door. Now, you turn on the switch. There, that ought to be enough. And now, to take out the dishes, and you open the door like this. something wrong with it. Well, there shouldn't be. It's a new machine. I'm going to try it again. Get some more dishes out of the cupboard. But, boss! Open the cupboard. Okay. <laughs> what was that? The dishes I washed yesterday. <laughs> I can't understand what's wrong. Neither can I. I put it together the same day that I assembled the other kitchen appliances. I don't see why it should break the dishes. It looks all right from the outside. Let's take a look on the inside. Oh, for heaven's sake. Rochester, the egg beater belongs on the mix master. <laughs> not, in the, not in the dishwasher. Then I must have put the part from the dishwasher on the mix master. Why? This morning I tried to make a cake. When I turned on the switch, a big arm came out, grabbed me by the back of the neck, threw me in the bowl, and scrubbed me on both sides. What? And before I knew it, I was sitting in the cupboard on the third shelf. See, they even put them away for you. Well, Rochester, uh, call the appliance company and tell them to come out and fix the machine. I got to get down to the studio. But, boss, you can't go on those old clothes and you need a shave, too. I haven't got time now. I'll clean up at the studio. Now, go out in the garage and get the car, please. The car ain't running. Rochester, did you wreck the car? Well, boss, it wasn't my fault. What happened? Well, I took the car out for a while last night, and on my way home, I made a sharp turn and came face to face with a steamroller. Steamroller? Oh, so that's why you were so quiet when you got home last night. I didn't even hear you open the garage. I didn't have to. I slid the car under the door. <laughs> Rochester, you mean my car was flat and that thin? If I had a stamp, I could have mailed it to you. <laughs> Oh, 
well, you better get it fixed. Anyway, I'll take the bus down to the studio. So long, Rochester. So long, boss. See, I'll be late. There should be a bus coming along here. Oh, my goodness, I left my money and my other clothes. Well, maybe I can hitch a ride down. Here comes a car now. Going downtown, bud? Mm. I better start walking. See, if I don't get a hit soon, I'll be late for the broadcast. Hey, going downtown, mister? Yeah, hop in, bud. Move over, Sophie. Let him sit in the back. <laughs> yes, yes, the, the back's all right. I hope I'm not putting you folks to too much trouble. That's all right, bud. You see, I would have taken the bus, but I didn't have the money. You don't have to explain, bud. Sophie, slip the poor guy a book. <laughs> but I don't need... Give him an extra two bits. He needs a shave, too. Look, mister, I don't... Where are you it. going, bud? To NBC. How do you like that, Sophie? Instead of looking for a job, he goes to see radio programs. <laughs> yeah, he's probably too old to work anyway. Yeah. Hey, by the way, bud, how old are you? 38. <laughs> hey, Matt, did you hear what he said? Sophie, when you can't hold a job, your family throws you out, you bum around the country all your life, when you get to be 38, you look like that. <laughs> look, mister, nothing I... personal, bud. Hey, by the way, where do you live? Beverly Hills. Get him, Sophie, Beverly Hills. I, uh, suppose you have a big house and a butler and a swimming pool? Max, stop teasing him. <laughs> okay, okay. Gee, it's a nice car you have here. What kind is it? A Buick. Oh, boy, I wish I had one like it. What year is it? 1928. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> oh, this is a beauty. Turn on the radio, Sophie. Did I tell you about the place called Duwa City? It ain't no town, it ain't no city, it's awful small. Hey, awful they started the program Duwa without me. me. She's got bacon. It's my own fault. Yeah, Sophie, those sugar turn off the radio. Basement pool. What's griping you, bud? Plenty. They started the program without me. How do you like that, Sophie? This bum's got a ticket to the program, and he wants him to wait till he gets there. <laughs> now, wait a minute, mister. You can't talk to me like that. All right, all right. Calm down. I won't calm down. Do you know who I am? Sure, sure. You're Bing Crosby or Bob Hope or Jack Benny. Max, for heaven's sake, stop teasing him. <laughs> Okay, okay, Sophie. Turn on the radio again. Hey, Donzie. Donzie, what did Jackson get you for Christmas? Shoelaces again? No, no. Jack didn't know what to get me this year, so he came over to my house and painted my bedroom. <laughs> hey, Phil, how'd Santa Claus treat you? Oh, great, Donzie, great. I got a lot of stuff for my friends, but the best gift of all is this fountain pen. Just look at it. But, Phil, you have several fountain pens. Not like this one. You know that little stack inside that holds the ink? Yeah. Bourbon. <laughs> Bourbon? Yes, sir. I got the only fountain pen with a highball point. <laughs> if he thinks that's funny, he's got another... Sophie, get... turn off the radio. What's griping you now, bud? Nothing. I just didn't think that joke was funny. Oh, I suppose you can tell him better. You're darn right I can tell him better. Did you hear the one about hey, the... shut up! <laughs> hmm. Sophie, turn on the radio. Okay. Dennis, that's okay, okay, Don, okay, I'm here. Hiya, Jack. Hello, Jack. Hello, fellas. Yeah, I'm sorry I'm late, but I rode down here with Barbara Stanwyck and Robert Taylor, and they <laughs> they just wouldn't let me go. You know? <laughs> Say, Dennis, you sang beautifully. How do you know? I heard the program on the way down. Hey, oh. Jackson, didn't Livy come down with you? No, Phil. Mary can't be on the show today. She got a cold, but she's getting along all right. 
Now, kid. What'd you give her for Christmas, Jack? Mary? Oh, I gave her a beautiful gift. A pair of alligator shoes. Alligator shoes? That's awful. <laughs> What's awful about it? Now some poor alligators running around barefooted. <laughs> Sake. Now, kids... In the winter, too. <laughs> Dennis, be quiet. A uh, kid... Oh, say, Mr. Benny. What? See this tie I'm wearing? My girl knitted it for me for Christmas. Your tie? But well, what are those things hanging on the side? Sleeve. She started to make a sweater and changed her mind. <laughs> oh, well, it looks nice, Dennis, and that's a pretty stick pin you have in it. That's one of the needles. She forgot to take it out. <laughs> well, it's a beautiful gift, so... Now, kid, I'm sorry I was late, but now that I'm here, we better get on with the show because we've got a very important play to do. Well, Jack, before we go into that, I think we ought to have a commercial. I've got the quartet right here. Oh, yes, the sportsman. Well, all right, Don, let's have the commercial first. Jack, the boys have a very bad cold, but they'll do the best they can. All four of them have a cold? <laughs> the four of them? Yes. See, that's too bad. Well, let's hear the commercial anyway. Okay, take it, boys. <laughs> Happy days are again with New Year's Eve, folks. Again, we will all stand up and again. The good times. Happy days are you and me. Lucky times are here to stay. In fact, they've never been away. So we'll celebrate on... On... On New Year's Day With Too bad you've all got the flu I can tell you just what to do Get in bed and stay there Speedy Rick will be here soon We can stay from fancy food So let's hide up while we think it's good Happy days are here again I must have caught that cold from Guy Lombardo. <laughs> well, Don, wipe off the microphone. We'll get on with the show. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction tonight, even though we haven't done it for a couple of years, we're going to present another of our New Year's fantasies called The New Tenant or Goodbye 47, Hello 48. Now, in this fantasy... Wait a minute, Jack. How are you going to do without Mary? She always plays the part of Columbia. Oh, my goodness, you're right. And Mary can't be here. Hey, Jackson, you don't have to throw out our play. I just got an idea. What is it? Well, look, I rehearsed my show right across the hall, and Alice will be tickled to death to come in and pinch hit for Mary. Well, gee, I don't know, Phil. It's, uh... She'll do it for nothing. Oh, well, go get her. <laughs> you go ahead. What do you mean, go get her? What do you want, honey? Oh, hello, Alice. Hello, Jack. Alice, I'm so glad you came in. We want you to help us out with our play. You see, uh, Mary can't be here. Oh, that's too bad. What's wrong with Mary? She's home in bed with a bad case of alligator shoes. <laughs> Dennis, Mary has a cold, Alice. Now, let's get on with the show. Now, in our fantasy, I will play the part of the old year 1947, who is living in a big boarding house run by Uncle Sam and his wife, Columbia. Now, Alice, you'll play the part of Columbia. Columbia? Yes. On this network? <laughs> well, NBC has the holiday spirit, you see But Alice, I mean that you play Columbia, the mother of America And you were born in 1776 You know how old that makes you? 38 <laughs> 38? Well, if it's good enough for you, it's good enough for me Oh <laughs> Well, there's room there for both of us, you know <laughs> Now, Phil... Phil, you play the part of Uncle Sam, and you and Alice have 48 children, and you may soon have another child, Hawaii. Alice, come back. It's only a play. <laughs> yes. Now, Dennis, 
Uh, you will represent the different countries in the world that come in and say goodbye to the old year. But gee, how can I play all the different countries? I'm so confused. I couldn't have cast it any better. <laughs> now, let's get on with our play. The New Tenant or Goodbye 47, Hello 48. As the curtain rises, it is 2 o'clock in the afternoon of December 31st. And old man 47 is packing his bags, getting ready to make his exit. Curtain. Music. <laughs> Oh, Columbia. Columbia. Come here a minute, will you, please? Well, what do you want, 47? Give me a hand, will you? I got to get out of here before midnight and make room for the new tenant. Well, it's only 2 o'clock in the afternoon. What's your hurry? I ain't got a lot of packing to do. Hand me that, will you? Oh, why, old timer. Bubble gum. Yep. Love the stuff. <laughs> but how can you chew it? You ain't got the teeth. I gum my gum by gum. <laughs> My pointy nose always breaks him. <laughs> Say, I wonder if it's still raining out. What a day. Doggone, it's thundering, too. Isn't that awful on my last day here? I'm going to have a talk with Thunder. Oh, Thor! Thor! Yes! <laughs> Are you Thor? No, just a little angry. Now, don't be funny. This is my last day on Earth. Good. Why? You've been a lousy year, and I'm glad to get rid of you. Lousy year? What are you talking about? I've been as busy as a bee. Tremendous production. Making automobiles, airplanes, refrigerators, television sets, clothes, typewriters, boats. Radios and lots of other things. I know, but they all went to the woman who gets who Miss Hush was. <laughs> oh, keep quiet. I said keep quiet. That store makes me sick, showing off with his thunder. Just mad because the Chamber of Commerce won't let him in California. <laughs> Say, Columbia, hand me those songs, will you? I'm going to take them with me. Here you are. Let me see, a feuding, a fussing, and a fighting, a lady from 29 Palms. And oh, here's this one. Chibaba, chibaba, chihuahua, and chilong, la kuka, la gamba. Chibaba, chibaba, ch Never did find out what that meant. <laughs> Say, old timer, take this with you, too. I can't stand it. What is it? That's what I like about the South. <laughs> Gone. I never found out what that meant either. Okay, give it to me. Well, howdy, old timer. I don't want to, Sam. Afraid you wouldn't get here in time to see me go. Well, I'm sorry, but I've been busy. Well, what you been doing, Sam? Been over in Arizona trying to help some of her children, them Navajos. The uh, Navajo Indians? Yep, the way they way we treated them, our faces should be red, too. Yeah. I hope you see everything's all right, though, from now on. Well, I better get on. Come in. Hey, it's my neighbor, Mexico. Mexico? Excuse me for talking in your face, senor, but I came to say goodbye, I think. <laughs> well, thank you. Hey, Mexico, it was awful nice of you to come up and say goodbye to the old-timer. Oh, it was nothing, senor. I was tired of fiesta, so I come up to your country to siesta. <laughs> to sleep? No, to siesta, William. <laughs> Williams. You like her, eh? Chibaba, chibaba, chihuahua. Oh, so that's what it means. Huh? <laughs> well, thanks for dropping in, Mexico. Good luck. Adios, senor. That was darn nice of him. Well, Columbia, I better get down with... Say, isn't it too early for the new year to be getting here? What do you mean, old-timer? Look out the window. Here comes him. Here he comes now without any clothes on, just a cloth wrapped around him. Hey, are you the new year? No, I'm on my way home from Santa Anita. <laughs> Doggone, I thought sure. Now, who can that be? Come in. Oh, look, it's, it's England. Well, hello, England. Come on in. Just dropped in to say goodbye, old chap. Thanks. 
Uh, hey, wait a minute, England. Is it uh, snowing outside? No, that's right on my shoulders. We had a big wedding a little while ago. Oh, yes, yes. And uh, how are you, Uncle Sam? You'll get it. You'll get it. Take your hands out of my pocket. <laughs> Don't make him wait too long, Sam. He needs it pretty bad. Huh? Thanks, old-timer, and cheerio. So long, England, and good luck. You know, he's quite a guy. Now, let's see. What else can I pack? Do you want to take these flying saucers with you? No, I need them like a moose needs a hat rack. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that on some radio program. Something about Norman Krasny. <laughs> I wonder if it's still raining. No, it's just a little cloudy. But, uh, oh, look. Look, the sun's a breaking through. Well, doggone if it ain't. Here comes the sun. Hello, Sal. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, old timer. <laughs> doggone, look at the way the sun is beaming. Yep, and get a load of that beam. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Sal, nice of you to come out on my last day. Yeah, just warming it up for the Rose Bowl game. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, well Sal, you ought to go to New York, melt some of that snow they got over there. That was my fault. They kept singing about a white Christmas, and they got it. Uh, <laughs> I guess you're right. Well, so long, Sal. So long, old timer. <laughs> Always like to see him. Does my rheumatism good. <laughs> well, I better finish packing. <laughs> Gosh, I'm tired. Sure had a tough time. Did the best I could, though, and I hope the new fella will do a lot better. Uh-oh, there's the first stroke of midnight. Lieutenant ought to be here any second now. Well, I better get my bags and just... Hey, that must be him now. Come in. Well, it's a little new year, all right. Hello, Sonny. Hello, old-timer. Say, you're a cute little rascal. Thank you. <laughs> you even got that new look. <laughs> Your diaper's two inches longer. <laughs> Come on in, make yourself at home. I'm just about to leave. Oh, by the way, Sonny, before I go, I want to show you my picture album. Your picture album? Yep. Here, I'll show you. Now, take a good look at this picture. Here's something I'm mighty proud of. That looks like a railroad yard with all those trains. Yep. That long one over there is the friendship train. Started out with just a dozen cars. But every place it stopped, people added more and more food for Europe. Well, what's this other one over here? Oh, that, that's called the freedom train. The freedom train? Yep. And I want you to get as many people as possible to see it. Whole life's life on that train. Bill of Rights, Emancipation Proclamation, Declaration of Independence. Those are big words. What do they mean? Well, I'll sum it up for you in the words of a great man, Abraham Lincoln. That government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from the earth. That makes a lot of sense. Well, Sonny, I got to be going now, but I want to tell you one thing. What's that, old timer? You're even going to have a tougher job than I had, but you will have an extra day to do it. You're a leap year. Leap year? Yeah, it's a special year they throw in just for the women. <laughs> you know, so those that ain't been asked can do the asking. <laughs> Before the poor guy knows it, he's married. Married? What's that? Oh, just another version of feuding, of fussing, and of fighting. <laughs> well, Sonny, be sure and take care of Columbia and Uncle Sam. I will. And the rest of the world ain't in too good shape. A lot of people hungry. But there's a fella here by the name of Marshall who's got a plan to sort of help him out. Marshall? Yep, George Marshall. Now, his plan's going to cost a lot of money, but it's worth every cent of it. Always remember, Sonny, is isn't money that counts. It's people. And it's up to those who have to help those who have. Well, I'm just about ready. Oh, yes. Uh, one more thing, Sonny. Yes, sir. A lot of awful lot of things in the world that ain't good, you know. There's distrust and greed and racial prejudice and hatred. See if you can do something about it. I sure will. Well, yeah, got to be going. Good luck, 48. Thanks, old-timer. Now be sure and take care of everybody. I will. Goodbye, 47. So long, Sonny. 
Happy New Year, everybody. Just a minute, but first, quality of product is essential to continuing success. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. L-S-M-F-T. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And fine tobacco is what counts in the cigarette. Remember what happens at the tobacco auctions? <laughs> at market after market, independent tobacco experts can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. <laughs> Lucky Strike presents The Man Who Knows. The tobacco warehouseman. Mr. Frank Brown of Stoneville, North Carolina, has been a tobacco warehouseman for the past 25 years. Not long ago, he said, Year after year, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy tobacco that's really fine. Light, ripe tobacco you just can't beat for smoking quality. I've smoked Luckers myself for 29 years. So for your own real, deep-down smoking enjoyment, remember... L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. Yes, next time you buy cigarettes, ask for Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Ladies and gentlemen, Phil and Alice can also be heard on their own show every Sunday. And don't forget to listen to A Day in the Life of Dennis Day on Wednesday. On our show tonight, we had with us Mel Blank, B. Benadera, Frank Nelson, and little Johnny McGovern. And I hope everybody had a very Merry Christmas. And on behalf of my cast and my sponsors, I want to wish each and every one of you a very This happy is NBC, Christmas. the national broadcasting company.